Hey everyone, Kevin Fisher, Regional Sales Director with One America's Care Solutions, and welcome to a full edition of LTC Coffee Break. Of course, with me today is my friend, neighbor, and colleague, Michael Florio, and we're ready to rock and roll. Michael, how are you today? Doing great, Kev. It's a beautiful day, and uh, we've got some really great information I'm looking to talk about, so let's get into it. All right. Hey, just a reminder, this is our full edition for LTC Coffee Break. Uh, every week, we're going to have the small one, two-minute espresso shot version of LTC Coffee Break. Obviously, you've seen them uh, in the last couple of weeks. So every week, you're going to get the espresso shot. The first Tuesday of every month, you're going to get the full LTC Coffee Break. And of course, every Tuesday, we are going to offer our virtual consumer seminar at 7 p.m. So anyway, Michael, what are we going to talk about? Well, Kev, we're going to talk about uh, a funding option that is really going to open up a lot of opportunity for the advisors listening in today. The clients that they're working with undoubtedly have a lot of money that's qualified. I just had a case where the advisor said, uh, I, I, my client is really interested, but they have almost all qualified money. Well, here's the good news. We can use that. We can use that qualified money to fund at a whole life asset care product. Uh, the benefits come out tax-free, which we're going to talk about, but there's some really good information here. Plus, Kevin's going to finish up with a great sales idea you probably haven't thought of. So, Kev, let's just jump right into it. Let's get started with uh, the information. Just kind of high-level overview. Tell us about why this is good and what One America is doing to help them out and bring that money over. Well, using qualified money isn't really a whiz-bang strategy. Everybody can do it, and, and there are a bunch of different ways to, do, to accomplish that, from purely self-directing out of, out of your uh, IRAs or 401k portfolio, may, creating a sweep account, doing an a annual deduction. However you want it, you're, you can manage it on your own. But we at One America are the only carrier to have a self-contained uh, set-it-and-forget-it it strategy. And we've been doing this for a long time. So effectively, what we have is an IRA rollover, trustee to trustee, that's tax-free. Over a period of 10 years, we take distributions from that IRA that we set up with One America, which is a fixed deferred annuity. Now, this is something I want to point out that's really important. This is a deferred annuity. It is not a SPIA. A lot of people, when they want to do a comparison, say, hey, well, my SPIA will do the same thing. No, it won't. A deferred annuity, you can turn off that income stream. A SPIA, you cannot. The second component of this thing is when we take that IRA rollover, that money, the second that it hits the One America account, we bonus that 20%. The third part of this whole thing is the distribution to fund asset care. Over a period of 10 years, we'll distribute equal payments from that qualified deferred annuity via income rider. So we're pulling the income. That distribution there from the qualified money being turned and paid into premium is constructive receipt and a 1099 is generated. That money is then paying the premium for asset care, which is the base plus the continuation of benefit rider for a 10-year period of time. Now remember, the clients need to be 59 and a half years old for, in order for this to happen. Otherwise, we're dealing with penalties. And 72T is not applicable. So 59 and a half to make this work. A second thing to keep in mind, remember, age 72 required minimum distributions. Distributions taken from that qualified money to fund asset care can count toward those RMDs. Now, whether or not they get you to the full, bo full boat of where the, uh, where the IRS requirement is, that's another story. If you got a million and I'm only using the 150,000 of value for an IRA rollover, I can pretty much assure you that the RMD coming out isn't going to hit the mark. So it can count toward it, but your accountant is going to need to make sure that that's, that's all in good order. And finally, the biggest thing here is it's pure leverage. My one funding source, my IRA, can fund a joint policy for me and my wife, and I can add lifetime benefits. Now, that's a lot of bang for your buck, 
and a lot of leverage. And think about this. This is an automated IRA max. I learned that 30 years ago when I get, came into the business and I had hair but knew nothing. Now <laughs> I have no hair and I know a little bit more. So that's the basic workings of asset care funded with qualified money. Michael, I'm going to throw it back to you. Well, thanks, Kev. Uh, and that, in a nutshell, is the difference between Kevin and I. I also have no hair, but I still don't know very much. But at least Kevin's learned a little bit over the years. Um, and let's talk about exactly uh, some numbers. Let's talk about what does this get the client? So let's go with, uh, you know, some assumptions. The clients are in their early 60s. Husband's 61, and we'll say the wife is 60. And let's say they bring over $150,000 in that uh, 1035 exchange. Uh, you know, IRA, trustee to trustee transfer. That 20% Kevin talked about would be $30,000 that One America is going to give them right off the bat. 150,000 that they brought over, 20% of that is 30,000. So we're crediting them with 180,000 at the outset. Obviously that 30,000 is gonna help tremendously offset some taxes. And the taxes are gonna be spread out over 10 years. So small tax bites as Kevin said, but what does that yield? Well, this is a long-term care policy. That's what it's designed for. What does it get them with long-term care? Almost $5,300 a month, $5,288 per month, and that's per person. So they could be, if they were both on claim at the same time, almost $10,600 getting paid for long-term care expenses to them, all coming out because it's qualified long-term care expenses, completely tax-free. That's $63,000 per year per person or $126,000 per year if they were both on claim. And as Kevin mentioned appropriately, they each have lifetime benefits. So yes, there's that monthly and annual cap, but benefits go on for as long as they need it. Lifetime benefits, it's a great situation. And by the way, if Mr. or Mrs. Smith, we'll call them that, because that's what I always call them, if they need no long-term care, then there is a death benefit of $176,000, almost dollar for dollar, what the total amount was of 180, and certainly well more than 150 they put in. So granted, there's a time value to money, but you know if they can come out with 26,000 more than what they contributed in death benefit, which comes out as any death benefit would, income tax-free for their children, that's a great situation. So you know, Kev, th those are the nuts and bolts of what the numbers would be, but why don't you leave them with that sales idea we discussed that can really help out that might be unique and I've actually seen this play out in real life on more than one occasion. You know, here's one that you don't really think about and that, that really comes down into the line of, uh, of gifting. And think about this scenario. Our issue age for asset care is 80. So we can work up to the age of 80 with someone provided that they're healthy enough. But let's just say for the sake of argument that Mrs. Smith is 81 years old and she's continually gifting monies to a trust or, or to her children uh, and grandchildren for, a, for her legacy, to create a legacy. Well, think about this scenario. The real risk to whatever she's trying to do is really her health. But that being said, maybe it's taken care of. But here's a strategy where you can apply an asset care into the gifting realm and consider this. She makes a contribution of $15,000 annually into the asset care policy for her son. If it's needed, he has long-term care benefits, takes care of him for whatever duration of time he needs. If he never utilizes it, that passes on to his grandchildren tax-free. So that simple gifting strategy leaves a legacy for multiple generations. That's just one idea what you can do with qualified money. And remember, we at One America, while we talk about this one idea, it's not the only idea that we have for qualified money. We're not a cookie cutter company where everybody gets the same recommendation. Everybody gets a recommendation unique to their needs and their wants and their plan. And this is just one of those ways to fund a long-term care strategy. Michael, what else do you have to add on? Well, Kev, you know, that's a, it's a great sales idea. 
And when I think about that, I think about the fact that the mother gets the satisfaction of gifting that money and seeing it being used rather than waiting and hope, hoping that, you know, with her inheritance, that'll go to a good cause. The son gets to, you know, utilize that money when he's younger. And of course, as I think everyone knows, these products are all throughout the industry, very age sensitive for him to get that at a younger age. It's going to buy a lot more insurance for him. Plus, generally speaking, we're all a lot healthier when we're younger. There's no guarantee later on when he goes to apply that he'll still be able to get approved for that. And of course, it's all coming out, you know, under that gift tax limit. So, you know, it's a win for everyone all the way around. And if this gets a little bit complicated, please keep in mind, we have a lot of support for you at One American. Reach out to Kevin or give me a call or uh, an email. We have not one, but two attorneys on staff in our advanced sales department, and we can get them on the phone with you. Kevin and I will facilitate that call and set it all up, and you can ask them the detailed questions that you need to about how this can be set up or should be set up, whether it's regarding this great sales idea Kevin had or other tax questions or estate planning questions in general. So, Kev, you know, a lot of good information today, a lot of good reasons to use qualified money and a great sales idea. So I think we've pretty much covered it all. Anything you want to do before we finish up with our thought? Hey, just just want to plant this this thought in your mind as it relates to your client conversations. The best way to understand where uh, the funding, premium funding opportunity can come from is to simply ask. And you can ask it, hey, where, you know, let's see your assets, or you can ask in the following question. If you had a claim today without insurance in place, where would be the first and second place we went to to pay for those services that you would need? And they're going to tell you, likely it'll be cash, likely it'll be income, but what else may be in there? Maybe there's annuities, maybe there's qualified money. All of that comes into play. And asking that question will help you put the best solution in place. And again, we're talking about qualified money in this scenario, but this is just a starting point. During the course of your conversation explaining how this works, you may find another alternative source, and we can quickly pivot and come up with a, a, an alternative plan. So it's not a one-size-fits-all. It's what is unique to your client, and I can't say that enough. Now, the last thing I want to say, just remind, remember, tune in Tuesdays, every Tuesday, LTC Coffee Break, Espresso Shot, first Tuesday of every month, LTC Coffee Break, Big Shot, and every Tuesday night at 7 p.m., our virtual consumer seminar. All of this is hubbed out of our ltccoffeebreak.com. So for the latest edition or an archive of everything that's gone on, just go to ltccoffeebreak.com and you'll be good to go. Michael, take us home. Okay, well, thanks, Kevin. You know, uh, Kevin and I really aspire every week and every month to give you some information and knowledge so that we can help you become more aware of different ways to help your clients protect their retirement savings. And, you know, knowledge is just very important in this industry. Knowing different ways to fund this, as Kevin pointed out several times, is really key. And so it made me think, Kevin, of this quote from one of our founding fathers in the United States, who was a contributor to the Declaration of Independence and to the U.S. Constitution. And he coined this phrase, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. And I think that's very appropriate to what we're trying to do and help advisors out so they can help clients out. So thank you to Benjamin Franklin for those thoughts from hundreds of years ago. And, you know, I'm pretty good, Kevin. And, and as usual, my coffee is out, which means that coffee break is out. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Have a great day.